I'm about to finish yet another night shift, but today is Valentine's Day, or as married people refer to it, Thursday. If an opposite existed to spending a romantic date with your partner, it would probably be what I'm going to do today, uh, which is head directly from here to YouTube's headquarters, where I'm going to be spending the day with a bunch of fellow nerds. Yes, I've managed to blag my way into EduCon, the precursor to VidCon, which brings together some of the best educational content creators out there. So I can only assume I uh, got in on some kind of diversity ticket, um, not because I'm brown, uh, just because I'm about twice the age of the average YouTuber. Nevertheless, I'm not complaining, unlike my wife, who naively thought we might make some plans on Valentine's Day, but like I tell her every year, I'm a heart doctor. Valentine's is basically my Christmas day. I look into her eyes and I say, darling, my true love is science. And that's even reflected in the presents I buy her. For example, here is this year's gift, a very normal chocolate heart. February is heart month. So there are a lot of videos out there right now about how to prevent the world's biggest killer, heart disease. This is not one of those videos. This video is about heart disease, but it's entirely useless. So why does the heart occupy such a special place in human culture? Literature, art, music have all mentioned hearts on a regular basis for years. Bonnie Tyler didn't sing about a total eclipse of her gallbladder. Billy Ray Cyrus didn't have an achy breaky pelvis. And d Light definitely did not say that Groove was in their colon. Of course, now we know that all of those feelings are up here in that squishy pink thing in your skull. Yet people still talk about feeling love, despair, passion or hatred in their heart. Warm feelings and a special place in my heart. It's not even culturally specific. It seems to be worldwide. There is no tribe somewhere that complain of painful elbows when they get dumped. Everybody says they have a broken heart. Researchers ask people from different cultures to demonstrate where they felt certain emotions, and the answers were fairly consistent. Anger, happiness, fear, anxiety were all felt in the chest. And look at love. The area around the heart is lit up like a Christmas tree, uh, along with yeah, some other parts of the internet. Yes. Anyway, let's move on. So what is the scientific explanation for this? Visceroception is the name given to the awareness of processes occurring in the viscera, our internal organs, which have a more diffuse nervous system and don't have the same touch receptors as our skin. Angor animi is a Latin phrase for a sudden, overwhelming feeling that you're about to die. It's typically reported by people having heart attacks. It's not pain, although obviously heart attacks also cause pain, but it's something sufferers often have trouble describing. They report an all-consuming sense that something is terribly wrong. If you've watched someone's face as they have a heart attack or a cardiac arrest, as I have on many occasions, you can almost see it in their eyes. It occurs because the heart is directly communicating with the brain, and that communication is two-way. Visceroception is thought to be processed by areas of the brain like the brainstem, the thalamus, and a region of the brain called the anterior cingulate cortex, which is also stimulated during physical pain, possibly explaining the overlap between physical and emotional pain. But we didn't start this by talking about people having full-blown heart attacks. We were curious about why you get that feeling of heartache when the love of your life friend zones you, or in my case, when the local supermarket runs out of poppadums. Several studies have shown that emotional turmoil stimulates the same part of the brain that we just mentioned, the anterior cingulate cortex, which fires up and stimulates the best nerve there is, yes, that's right, your favorite and mine, the vagus. The vagus nerve innervates the heart, the lungs, and the digestive system. An overstimulation from an emotional trigger can send signals to those systems causing nausea or even pain. The effect of emotion on the heart can be even more pronounced. Literature is full of stories of people dying from broken hearts. King Lear dies after discovering the murder of his daughter. Lord Montague claims his wife died of a broken heart after learning of her son's death in Romeo and Juliet. So is this a real thing? Well, it's not common, but it is possible. 
What's more, which I'm sure brings great comfort to sufferers, is the condition has an excellent name. There's been an unfortunate push from America to rename Takotsubo cardiomyopathy as Broken Heart Syndrome, which is not only truly unimaginative, it loses a disease name that's definitely in the top 10 best named diseases. At number 10, it's Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. Number 9, it's Chikungunya. Number 8, Ondine's Curse. Number 7, Pseudo Pseudo Hypoparathyroidism. At number six, it's Toxic Megacolon. Number five, the Jumping Frenchman of Maine. Number four, it's a joint entry for Honk and Boop. Number three, it's Hungry Bone Disease. And number two, Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. And at number one, of course, it is Exploding Head Syndrome. A Takotsubo is the Japanese word for an octopus trap. And Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, it you know, this disease was first described in Japan, so I think we should describe it in a Japanese way. Um, okay. We don't fully understand, but a catecholamine surge and nervous system stimulation is thought to create abnormalities in the tiny blood vessels in the heart causing this unusual shape. Thankfully, it's usually self-correcting, but rarely it can be fatal. Another reason that broken heart syndrome is a bad name is that Takotsubo can sometimes occur after receiving good news. I treated a lady a while ago who had some very unexpected happy news, which rather overwhelmed her and she was rushed into us with a suspected heart attack. And this is a picture I took of her heart, which you will now recognize shows that characteristic Takotsubo shape. She made a full recovery and went home. Awareness of the effect of emotional stress on cardiovascular disease grew when Debbie Reynolds suffered a fatal stroke the day after her daughter Carrie Fisher's unexpected death. This was not Takotsubo, but we do know that losing a loved one can actually increase your chance of death. A study of tens of thousands of people in the UK showed that although rare, the rate people died in the 30 days after their partner's death was doubled. But don't take that to mean that you should stay single. Just in case Valentine's Day manufactured hype and your grandmother nagging you weren't enough, now you've got a new reason to get married. Yes, despite what my wife might tell you, marriage is actually good for your health and indeed your life expectancy. Compared to married people, unmarried people have higher rates of heart disease, stroke, and they die earlier. What's even more interesting is that married people who have heart attacks are less likely to die than unmarried people that also have heart attacks. So if you didn't manage to find the love of your life on Valentine's Day and you weren't already in a relationship, don't worry. I find telling people about their impending death if they remain single is a great icebreaker at parties. In fact, why not try a new chat-up line? Come with me if you want to live. <laughs>